Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today let's talk about the Decklink 4K HDMI capture card. One of the most popular ways of getting multicam video into your system, whether it be for recording, as I'm doing right now, or live streaming, is the Camlink 4K from Elgato. Now that device is a USB dongle that's really not been updated for the last six years. And many of you, like myself, have been having issues with glitching and stuttering video, especially when you have more than two cam links connected into your system. So based on some of the recommendations from you guys and what I've read on forums and looked at on YouTube, I decided to get myself the Decklink 4K Quad from Blackmagic. Now this is essentially a PCIe card that will fit into a PC, but if you're a Mac owner, then you have to get an enclosure. And I got the Helios S3 from OWC, which is a, just a simple enclosure with a one card slot to turn the PCIe card into a compatible system to connect to your Mac via Thunderbolt 3. So installation is pretty straightforward. If you're a PC user, you just take the PCIe card and plug it into your system, download the driver, and there you go. For Mac, it's a little bit more complicated. You take the PCIe card, plug that into the enclosure, screw the thing together, and then download the driver and plug it in. And that's about it. At the back of the debt link, you have four HDMI ports that support up to 4K at 60 frames per second, which is pretty good. Two Thunderbolt ports, one is a 15 watt and the other is an 85 watt. Now the display port, as you see here at the bottom part of the OWC enclosure is not really connected and doesn't serve any purpose. For me, I find the heatsink fan of the deck link to be quite noisy, even though it was in the enclosure. So I basically uh, routed all my cables outside of my little studio and put the enclosure with the card somewhere else so I couldn't really hear it. Other than that, there really hasn't been any major issues with the card from glitches or performance, but there are some limitations which I'll come on to right now. So in use, the Decklink Quad has been pretty box solid. As I mentioned, I've had no glitches during recordings or any live streams. It handles my three cameras that I've connected without any issue. I'm running them all at 4K and they're running at 24 frames per second. I've tested it at 30 frames per second without any problems. I don't really run stuff at 60 frames per second unless I'm actually doing external recordings. So I haven't really tested that, but for what I'm read, and look to the forums, there's been no sort of performance degradation or any problems with that. So let's talk a little bit about some of the good points that I've found after using this card for a few weeks now. So the good points are that for Ecamm users, you'll be really happy about this, that we have persistent mappings in Ecamm. Now, what actually does that mean? Well, if I switch and show you the camera switcher here. So as you can see in Ecamm, we have uh, three cameras set up. I'm not actually using the other two right now, but they're all been mapped to the respective source outputs of the deck link card. Um, camera A is assigned to the one that you're looking at now, and then I've got two other cameras connected, which is camera B and camera C. Now, traditionally, with the old cam links, um, because, and it's not a limitation of eCam, it's just how it's mapped internally within the Mac and the USB bus. Every time you'd reboot your machine or you'd restart eCam, then those mappings, i.e. which um, cam link was associated with which camera, would get messed up and you'd have to really go through and reset those each time. I haven't found any problems whatsoever with the mapping with the Decklink Quad. So that's great news because then you can just restart, no problem, and it's always persistent with regards to those camera mappings. So that's a pretty good thumbs up. As I mentioned, it records up to uh, 60 frames per second at 4K. I haven't tested that for a fact, but performance specs and looking at all the forums have not indicated any issues at all. And as I mentioned, no glitching during streaming or recording. So overall, it's been a positive experience with the Decklink Quad so far. However, there are some things that I, I really haven't found an answer to out there um, from the forums and things. I did get an answer on one of my questions to Blackmagic support. And I need to bring these to your attention because this could be a deal breaker for some of you that are using it in this environment. And it might be something associated with my setup or the driver that I'm using, although I was yet I couldn't find an answer. But if you know the answer to this, please leave a comment below 
because I'll be really interested. So let's look at some of the things that aren't too good with this system. So one of the things that I have got confirmed by Blackmagic support is that the driver for this particular card is only associated with one application at a time. So what that means is I'm running Geekam right now and obviously you can see me as a feed from the Decklink quad. If I now open up Zoom or Keynote or any other application that is relying on a video feed, you will not see any source video coming into those applications because the first application that you launch that uses the Decklink driver will grab the associated streams from those cameras and not release them or multi-use them with any other application. Now, this is really weird. And I said, well, OK, well, the CamLink allows you to do that. Why doesn't this particular driver allow you to do that with this very expensive uh, Decklink quad card? And the support site came back and the guy was, you know, very, very nice. But basically, he said that the driver does not support using it with multi applications or simultaneous use of applications at the same time. So just keep that in mind that um, if you want to run Ecamm, for example, and then run maybe a presentation like Keynote, then you're not going to be able to use a camera um, feeds with this card at the same time. So that could be a deal breaker. For me, it's not because I don't use it in that configuration. Obviously, with Zoom, you can use the virtual cam features in Ecamm, but you can't get the virtual cam to be supported in uh, QuickTime or in Keynote. So any of those Mac apps that you rely on might be a deal breaker for you. Um, the other point I want to make is obviously these cards aren't cheap. And then coupled with the fact that you have to then get an enclosure and um, bumps the price up as well. Now, there is a Elgato version of uh, this card which is much cheaper. In fact, I think it's $200 cheaper, but it does not work in any enclosure if you're trying to run it with a Mac. So for PC owners, there's no problem with the Elgato version of the quad card uh, unit, but you can't use it if you're a Mac user. So you're really stuck with something like the Decklink or uh, there is another manufacturer's card, but again, they're quite pricey. And then obviously with the additional hardware that you need as an enclosure, that does bump the price up. But it depends on what you want. I mean, deck links um, are quite expensive, but also cam links are around $110 each. And if you need four of those, the cost soon starts mounting up. And as we've mentioned before, they're not terribly reliable. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and as I mentioned in bullet point number one, there is no camera source option if you're running that in Keynote. Now, I can't get that to work. I've tried rebooting the machine, not launching any other application. So it's a, it's a bit painful. So um, I would have liked to use Keynote with the live video mode, but it's not letting me select this as a video source. And I certainly don't want to use another capture card for that. I'm going to keep with what I have. So if any of you know why that is the case, I have actually reached out to a few people to try and find out the answer, but as yet, I don't have a resolution. So again, that could be a deal breaker for you guys. If you're curious about what the software looks like, it's nothing magical. It's just the driver that you need for the card to initialize with your operating system. But it's got two little features that I like. Um, the first one is that for each of the inputs, you can actually label your camera. Um, you click on this little icon here and you can give the input a name. So that will actually come through on some of the applications. You can pick what camera um, is associated with the respective port. I've labeled mine A74 for the camera that I'm using right now. And then the other two cameras, one is on the slider and the other one is on a room. And coincidentally down here, what's really good is that it will show you what the frame rate and resolution is of the input from your camera. So you can just double check that you've set everything correctly. Make sure for consistency that you set all your camera uh, frame rates and resolutions to be the same. It's easier then uh, for editing and so on. Mine is set to a 4K input and it's running at 23.98 frames per second, which is uh, running on an NTSC setup on this camera, even though I'm in a European format but I wanted 24 frames a second and that's why I set it like that. So right now I've got all three cameras connected at the same time. I could have a fourth one, but I don't have another camera to actually 
plug in right now but the point is that they're all running at 4k 24 frames per second running into the deck link quad and there's no glitches no problems with it whatsoever i've got the cameras running on a cycle mode within ecamm and that's just basically cycling through each of the cameras that i've got connected on a random time frame so it's pretty straightforward to set up what i will say is that um if you want to record in ecamm each of the cameras that are coming in to your decklink quad then you can run that on isolated video recording but that actually maxes out at 1080p so if you actually want the 4k feeds then maybe you should use a switcher like i'm doing now and then just have them recorded like this in an automated fashion it's entirely up to you or you could even record directly on the camera old school and then mix them up later when you put them into your editing software so that's it thank you very much for watching i would be interested to know what kind of capture card are you using in your system are you sticking with cam links and how many have you got or are you looking at an alternative more robust option by using a pcie card with four i mean with this particular setup if you got a different enclosure you could have four eight twelve maybe up to 16 cameras if you were crazy enough to have those i know i've seen some people within the ecam family that have had more than five or six cameras at any one time crazy stuff i don't have enough power in my room to support all those cameras but anyway thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up you know what to do and i'll see you in the next video <laughs>